All right, so this will be part two of an example one. We were talking about linear transformations. We are trying to decide if our transformation in part A is linear or not. Um, so we showed uh, the first condition was satisfied. So we saw that condition was satisfied. Now the other condition says if we multiply by a scalar, write that a little better. Um, if we multiply our vector by a scalar, let's try this one more time. So if we multiply our vector by a scalar, do we get the same thing? Um, and then take a transformation. Do we get the same thing as if we take the transformation first and then multiply by the scalar? So now we'll see whether or not this condition holds or, or not. So again, I'm just going to show it real generically like we did before. So Vector u, maybe we'll just do like we had before. We'll just keep the components a1 and a2 like we had. Again, maybe let's ref remind ourselves on the rule. So it says subtract second from first, add the two components, and then double the first component. So on the left side, if I take, uh, you know, if c is any uh, scalar, if I multiply that by a1 and a2, well, again, if you just multiply by a real number scalar, we just multiply each component. So we'll get c times a sub 1 and then c times a sub 2. Okay, so now we have to apply our rule. And again, the rule said take the second component, subtract it away from the first one. It said add those two components together. And then the last one said uh, take whatever the first component was and multiply it by 2. Okay, so now we've got an expression for the left side. Okay, so this is, uh, again, multiplying our vector by a scalar, then applying the transformation. So now I'm going to do the right side, and again, we'll just compare whether or not these are equal. So let's see. Let's figure out an expression for the right side. So we've got C times uh, the transformation of vector U. Again, that has components A1 and A2. So if we do that, let's apply the transformation. Again, it says we take the first minus the second, add them together, double the first one. And again, now all I'm going to do is just multiply by the scalar. So again, in this case, uh, we just multiply each component, but be careful, you would obviously have to distribute in all these cases. So we would have C times A1 minus A2, uh, C times uh, A1 plus A2, and then we would have C times 2A sub 1. So again, this is an expression for the right-hand side, applying the transformation and multiplying it by the scalar. And let's see if we get the same thing as what we had before. Let's put it in there. So, uh, so this is what we got just a second ago. Okay. Well, obviously, if we distribute, we'll get CA1 minus CA2. So the first, uh, the first lines agree. If we distribute, we'll get CA1 plus uh, CA2. So those also agree. And then, uh, you know, this is multiplication. Obviously, 2CA1 is going to be the same thing as C times 2 uh, times A sub 1. So, in fact, uh, the second condition is also satisfied. Whew. And we have now justified, in fact, uh, that, yes, this first transformation is linear. So, as I'm sure you can probably guess, um, this next transformation is not linear. Um, but, you know, again, I encourage you, instead of just, you know, uh, I, I think hopefully you have the idea at that point, instead of just, uh, you know, instead of just watching it, it's the exact same thing. Maybe try to practice on Part B, um, see if, in fact, you can justify that, it, the, uh, that something's not right, that they're not linear. And, again, what, ha what will happen is you'll, uh, you know, at some point, you know, You'll take the transformation on the left side, you'll do these transformations on the right side and see that they're not equal. Either that will happen or uh, case two will be violated. So, um, you know, take a look at those, see if you can't uh, justify that they are in fact not linear. But I'll do those as well so that you can see, uh, just to see me step through it in case you need to see it.